Hello everybody, welcome back to more Monster Train. Took our licks from a uh, powerful minion last time. This time we're hoping to once again get to the end. And maybe mix up the clans a little bit. I've been getting a lot of Melting Remnant and Stygian recently, so... Uh, still gonna stick with random and just hope we get something a little different. <laughs> All right, so much, so much for something different, I guess. Uh, so here we are with Stygian and Remnant. But you know, perhaps the game is telling me that I need to win with this faction or this combination. Uh, make up for my mistakes of last time. Uh, as always, forgetting to check this early, so we'll do it this time around. Looks like we have the Devouring Our Spells, uh, Seraph. find that to be one of the less disrupted ones. You usually have some junk left in the deck by the end of the run anyway, so it's not that hard to throw it out in front of your important spells. Uh, beyond that, looks like we once again have two Moldeds on top of the Primitive Molds, so lots of ability to bring our creatures back. Frozen Lances, of course. Uh, some Spell Weakness, maybe we can do something with that. And Preserve can have its moments, so... Interesting one to start with. Check out our Relic. We can either heal our Pyre with Consume Cards or apply Silence. I'm generally a fan of the Seaweed, it can get rid of some nasty effects, such as the Armor buff that killed us last time. Uh, don't believe we have any Consume at the moment, so... Yeah, I'll just go ahead and take the seaweed. And see where our champion is. Looks like we can either reduce cost of damage spells or apply spell weakness with sweep. This I haven't found too impressive overall. Just making your crappy spells zero and making your slightly more expensive spells slightly cheaper. Doesn't accomplish that much and scales poorly later on as well. Um, so. We'll just pick up the sweep here. Does an already job clearing crappy minions, and the spell weakness can get us through the early bosses. We don't currently have a powerful spell, unfortunately. It's always nice when you pick this up to have something like a Helicryl Crystallis or uh, Titan's, Titan's Grasp. Forgetting the names here, uh, but basically a spell that does more damage than Frozen Lands, but maybe with enough spell weakness we can work. Don't exactly have a lot of options anyway. And we have the Mark of Invasion for our trial. I will go ahead and take it. The Frozen Lances can clear a few off and the Silence can get rid of a little bit of rage. Or is that the water? Uh, there's... Okay, this looks like this is triggered a bit least. This won't be getting rid of the rage, but either way, I think we'll Plan to take a little damage and get our trial going. Yeah, so it looks like the silence guy gets rid of the slay shield, but not the rage. It's fine. Unfortunately, he didn't draw a single frozen lance here. Bit of a tough start. And the bottom floor has less slots. Also not good. We do want our champion down there. So... Uh, this is not the start we were looking for. Don't think... Maybe we can set up on the top floor, but then our spell weakness is bad. We could let our units die and then try to reform them, but... Boy, that's a, that's a daring plan, I'll say. But I think, unfortunately, we are just kind of forced into doing this. I don't like it. Not a good starting hand. Of course, Collector up here, and our train steward's dying, but we can reform them for a little bit of extra tankiness, it's fine. Uh, here, still not looking to play anything at the top. I'll bust steward in the middle, and I guess we'll just try to max out the damage there. Bye. 
me start sweet getting rid of the archer. Alright, and here it looks like we have a regular train steward and a molded one. Uh, I think... Are we guaranteed to draw more molds? Nearly guaranteed. Uh, we'd have to get very unlucky to not draw at least one of these. So given that, I will play the Burnout Steward down here and play plan to replay it again. Uh, and here we'll just deploy a regular looking Steward and finish this guy out of the lands. Okay, Not, didn't get horribly unlucky, that's good. So, throw the steward here in the front, and that gives us 45 damage and hopefully a few stacks. Uh, let's see, Pyre's doing 20, so this helps a little bit. And I guess we may as well freeze the lance. It is our only damage spell, so we'll want to make sure we have one. Though three stacks, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I do want to get rid of the weight. And let's see what we can form here. We get our champion back. Might as well throw him in the front, tank a hit, and apply one more stack of spell weakness. I think I'll put one steward at the top. Keep holding on to slants. Okay. We get to choose what we get back, which is good. That means we can get the really tanky train steward. Hopefully that moves the needle a bit for us. Here we'll just by even more spell weakness, and somehow managed to get through this boss. That's exciting times. Okay, took quite a bit of damage, unfortunately. But, here's the spell we were looking for. Helical Crystallis just gives us a nice finisher for once we get our stacks of spell weakness applied. Definitely be picking that one up over more spell weakness application. Offering token doesn't synergize much. And here we have two different options of something we could try to get back with the primitive molds. Right now, would I rather have this guy who tanks a little damage and explodes, or the giraffe, which I can bring back over and over and eventually make pretty strong uh, as, as a DPS unit. I sort of like the sound of both of them, but I think the explosive ends up being better later on. Just having a one tile thing you can ch chuck in the front and resurrect. Uh, usually you can find room for that, whereas the draft plan takes a little bit to get going, really. But with the, what is it, five primitive molds and two molds in our deck, we definitely want something we're happy to bring back, and that is one of those things. So, hit our Merchant of Steel. Find Multi Strike, uh, as well as some nice basic upgrades. So, let's hope for a good unit here. And we get the Harvest Baron and the Lady. Lady makes me wish I had picked up the Giraffe a little bit, but what can you do? Neither of them particularly strong with Multi Strike. Generally, a bigger fan of the Baron. You can get the Harvest Triggers rolling, he can do quite a bit of work. That said, perhaps I still do the Lady anyway, because I need something to tank. Hmm. Let's look at the map one more time. Just seeing what's coming up. Perhaps we can pick up a tank here. So what I'm thinking is because of the multi-strike specifically. I think if the multi-strike wasn't in the store, I would happily just pick up a lady and have a tank and move on with my life. But the Wickless Baron with multi-strike can be good. 
you can get this harvest rolling and once he's hitting twice and has the harvest going, he can end up doing quite a bit of damage. So if that sits on the same floor as our Titan's Bane is already sweeping away weak units, we should get a couple of triggers and then the multi-strike kicks in and does a lot for us. So I think in the later part of the run that'll end up being really good. For right now, if we upgrade him with, say, multi-strike in the attack, it's a little bit of a weak unit in terms of health, but it will buff itself, so I think I'm going to give that a shot. I'm just a big fan of the Baron in general. So I'll give him multi-strike and some attack. He's already hitting for 30, just base. I'm not too interested in giving this health, I don't think. Though, of course, I will be looking to play it in the front. And we have a 10 armor trial here with a haste granter and these clergymen. It's a little rough. Uh, it means our Titan's Bane doesn't get to kill everything in a single sweep. The Rage Creatures also mean it's going to be harder to set up on the bottom floor, and the Haste means we can't set up anywhere else. Um, though perhaps we can make the top work. The Wickless Baron will kill two of those guys a shot. So that's pretty good. The Lances won't do much. Ah, man. I think this might just get us in a little bit too much trouble, perhaps. Yeah, we just need to get the triggers rolling in order to have this Baron uh, do what he needs to do for the boss phase. I'm actually not even that worried about the damage they cost the Pyre, because even with the haste, by the time they get there, they're only doing one a shot. But um, just the fact that the Baron won't get as many triggers if we set up that way is a problem. And I'm extra glad, I think, the, the bottom floor being smaller means we have to set up on the top, so... So what are we doing? And for now we'll just chuck a train steward as a human shield. These unfortunately don't do a whole lot for us. Okay. This is dying, they're all dying. That looks mostly fine. We'll definitely want to play one steward here to get our collector. No real reason to play one on the bottom just to die. We're already going to have one in Deadpool if we wanted to resurrect it. So uh, I'll be playing the Chrysalis. I just need to figure out if I'd rather play it at the top or at the bottom. And I think I'm happy to have this guy die for now. We'll likely find a way to resurrect him anyway, so I'd rather just reduce the damage at the bottom. did find a mold, though. We also have these lances. I guess we may as well throw them up here. Um, we can give us an extra trigger. The lances don't really matter. So. Of course, even the boss is being hasty. Uh, we get to mold the steward once more. Let's look at our final hand here. We're gonna get an Entombed Explosive as well as a Mold. So I'm happy to have this guy die and do a little bit of damage. This is going on the boss. And I don't know if it matters whether we preserve this or not. And here we're hoping the Baron's just strong enough, and indeed it is. Fantastic news. Alright, we have another big damage spell, and one that sticks around in our hand. So, uh, I kind of like that. It just means we're guaranteed to have something big at the end. We do have the Preserve to potentially have something else stick around, but the Chrysalis we're looking to sort of cast throughout the fight anyway. So I might be interested in the Tornado. Um, 
don't think I'm interested in this. We have that effect already. And the Flash Freeze does an alright job. I like uh, Frostbite in general, but with the spell weakness, we're looking more for spells that deal damage directly. So we'll be looking to grab this and just have it sit in our hand until the end of the fight. And here we have what's quickly becoming, I guess, my signature, because I seem to always get these clans. The Molten Encasement looks to sit uh, in front of the Baron or whatever and give us stealth. Good stuff. We'll pick it up. Alright, we do have another flag coming up here, so we don't necessarily have to go to this one. That said, we might want to anyway. We do need to fill up uh, a few floors here. We currently have one unit with some tombs to sort of jump in the way. So now that post this, we get a relic out of it as well. Magic Merchant could be good. We are looking to improve our spells and the health could be beneficial as well, but I don't think it's critical. I think we're strong enough that we can get through the boss without the extra health. So I'm going to go for the unit. Uh, we can always upgrade our spells later. Okay, well the Titan's Claw obviously quite strong with both Ice Tornado as well as Preserve. Uh, being able to just reduce stuff in our hand. Drop Cage, powerful effect, but we don't have anything that works with it at the moment, so we'll go with the Titan's Claw. Seems all right to me. And we have another spell weakness applier versus a Siren of the Sea with its cant. So, as much as I'd love to once again double up on spell weakness, we could have the Tethys and the Siren sitting there. The problem is uh, we do want our Wickless Baron on the same floor as Tethys in order to take advantage of Harvest Triggers from the Sweep. And despite him having extra health from Harvest, uh, at 15 base health he's not going to be a very good tank, so we do need to leave room in the front for something else. So I don't think we actually have room for that strategy to pay off. We could still play her on a separate floor and look to sort of take advantage of spell weakness multiple times. That said, the Encant makes a lot of sense to me. We'll be looking to apply spell weakness and then take advantage of it on a following floor, so happy to get an Encant creature going. Uh, and this one is sort of the, the most flexible of all the Encant uh, creatures in that it gets attack and health, so you can kit it out to be a tank or a DPS depending on your needs. So I'll be grabbing that. It won't be great yet, but I think it might do some good work for us later on. And here we have our blacksmith who can give us either a X damage spell or the spike driver colony. For those of you not familiar, once you pick one of these up, uh, they create copies as you play them, and once you get four copies, they become improved. This one gets 20 attack, this one I think gets 20 magic power, something along those lines. The DPS here is interesting, uh, in the form of the bugs. We could fit one perhaps with our Wickless Baron and some sort of tomb situation. And then on a further floor we can set up the Siren of the Sea as a tank and just have a bunch of these little guys supporting in the back. The Rail Spikes of course aren't bad, we're a bit of a spell deck so having a big X damage spell is okay, but really the conversion rate on this even once it gets the buff just isn't that strong, you're looking at, uh, you know, getting 30 damage for 3 mana, whereas the Ice Tornado just does better. And with the Frozen Synergies as well, like, I'm just not as excited by this. I'll give the Spike Driver Colony a shot, we currently have a lot of room, so we should be able to fit these in somewhere useful. It's always nice to be able to 
upgrade them before you start copying them, which we might have a chance to do over here. Uh, we probably won't get all four copies in one battle here, so maybe we can improve some of the ones we have and go from there. For the time being, they're pretty useless one ones. They'll just take a hit and die. Double exploding barrels. Okay, well, good news, bad news. Bottom floor is, or does have full space, so that's good. Bad news is we can't play there right now because we'll die horrifically. We can set these guys up on the middle floor. Uh, there are a couple of hasters in this particular fight. So those guys will get through the top, which is a little rough for us. But again, we just can't set up here because we'll die. So it's either middle or top, and top doesn't make as much sense. So I guess we'll go middle. Uh, just kill one of these. Double checking what's in our deck again. We don't have a tank for here currently. Uh, we'll be looking to set up the siren at the top to take advantage of our spell weakness situation here. So go ahead and do that. Start encanting there as much as we can. Uh, and I guess we may as well throw a spell weakness on the boss. Why not? Uh, looking to freeze our cards, it'll make them cheaper. So it's great. And this steward can go ahead and die to get some bunch of triggers. Okay, so we'd like to find something for here. Oh, we don't need to because it got silenced. That's great. So, we can remold some stuff. We can get our entombed explosive online. Uh, certainly no reason not to do this here. Get our train sword back. Uh, so he does cover and we're already killing here, so I'll go ahead and play him at this level and get our into an explosive to kill one of these. And in the meantime, I guess we'll just fire off a lance for the trigger. Call that the day. Yep, and there's the haste. And there's a bomb as well. Let's see. So I might be looking to use my tornado here, eliminate a couple of these guys. And I think I will go ahead and do that. Might hit the boss. But it's okay. Eliminate the haste granter, that's great. So don't have to worry about it anymore. And in that case, uh, we can afford to spend some more mana on this. Our molds. Let's see. Yeah, we want the bigger unit here to tank the hit from that. And again, might as well just play this. Uh, just fire something off. And it looks like this fight is once again just going to be down to our bear and hitting the boss very, very hard. Now we find our first colony. Great news, we'll definitely have that jump in the way of a hit. And in the meantime, uh, I guess we can continue to pay mana as we toss another burnout unit down here to explode there. And this has a lot of time at this point, I guess I'm just jumping in the way. Uh, sure. Alright, we're already on the final wave. Great stuff. Uh, we got our stealth, and we have something else if we'd like. 
I'll just pick up the Entombed Explosive. Play both of them here, and I'm pretty sure that'll be more than sufficient for our purposes. Yep, the boss is dying. Cool. Alright, so Daedal is down. Finally got not Talos. That's exciting times. And let's see what our options are. We have Harness Titan for additional magic power. Kind of interesting with the Ice Tornado and the Chrysalis, but I think too many of our spells don't benefit from magic power for that to be good. We can pick up a Remnant Pack to apply Endless to a unit, so that we could maybe get our stealth going once again. I don't hate that. Uh, and Ancient Synergy is just a nice big damage spell. We have, at the moment, two of those. The third one would be good, but this isn't so incredible, I don't think. Uh, so I'll pick up the Endless. And we have our choice of unit as well. I have to keep going back to the deck and, and figuring out exactly what I'm doing here. So the bottom plan is Tethys plus the Wickless Baron plus one Spike Driver Colony plus a hopefully endless tomb in the front. The floor above is a Siren of the Sea with three spike driver colonies most likely looking to uh, take advantage of our encant triggers on that floor and the final floor has nothing going for it so we need something that stands reasonably on its own and that would be the lady of the house we have all the moldeds to try and bring it back and it's just a decently static creature that can uh, do a bit of a bit of goalkeeping for us, or if we draw our cards in an awkward order, it can play tank for a while at a different floor even, so. Not unhappy to see this one, not excited about it either, though. Not looking for space, uh, so it's between energy and draw. We don't have any zero-cost cards. Well, we're about to have some spike driver colonies, and the... Preserve makes stuff free. Uh, I guess we have the energy sevens as well. Okay, so we do actually have an okay amount of zero cost cards. We don't have that many expensive cards since this again makes itself free. And we still have lots of cards we're not that interested in, so I'm gonna go for draw here. Uh, we'll probably go for energy next time unless we get some relics that help us in that department. And here I'm definitely gonna be looking at the Merchant of Steel. I would like to try and improve the spike driver colonies before we further multiply them. Uh, and let's see what we can find here. Okay, a paraffin thug or a second lady of the house. Uh, you know, I'll take a paraffin thug again. He's just a guy that can kind of hang out and occasionally make us money. He's not a huge part of our plan, but the occasional extra income. Nice. Okay, we got the Frostbite upgrade, which I'm excited to see. Just uh, having Sweep and Frostbite 10 on a unit is completely insane. The spell weakness plan is fun and all, but it's just ultimately not as good. You really don't need that many stacks of spell weakness on the non-bosses, and on the bosses, Frostbite works better. So, going with that, and see how we can spend our 300 gold. Alright, we immediately get Endless, uh, so I will be putting that on the Stealth Unit, a play we've, you've seen me make several times now, and I will continue to stand by it. Plus 5, plus 5, and Burnout. Can just go on the Lady, make her last a little bit longer, and that's fine. And 10 attack. Uh, 
I did say I wanted to improve these. Tag isn't exactly what you're looking for, but it is something, so I'll take it. Let's see what we get off our reroll. Quick would have been nice. Too bad we can't get that. Um, can for armor is good on the Siren. We are looking to have that be a tank. And then 25 health would also be fantastic on it. I would very much like that. But I think what I'm actually going to do is max out one of these spike drivers with extra health. Uh, that just means if it'll survive sweeps and stuff. Um, and just look to be copying this one rather than this one. So we'll end up with three good copies and one bad copy at the end, and that's just fine. Uh, we do have the ability to bring this back with moldits and stuff, so we should be able to get all of it going in one battle pretty easily, I think. <laughs> Not a bad shop, we definitely need another uh, steel merchant before we're totally happy. That looks like that won't be for a while, unfortunately. But, uh, I think I'm pretty happy with the results, even if uh, they're not quite all the way there yet. And here we're getting extra attack. Uh, again, I think because we didn't improve our siren, I'm not sure that is something we can realistically do, and before we draw our Stealth Giver, uh, the bottom floor is also a little bit vulnerable, so unfortunately, too dangerous for me. Silence great in this battle, these guys get quite scary as they advance, and we just get to ignore that completely. Uh, and here we'll be going with the Baron and the Pethys, of course get to kill one right away, great. Um, may as well freeze our mold, and then we just have to decide if we want to deploy any stewards anywhere, and uh, the spike drivers for now are looking to die, so they aren't actually, they don't actually count, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. So we do have room for like one of these, uh, I guess I'll deploy it somewhere here. Uh, I think we'll just put one at the top for sure. Obviously that spawns in the wrong spot. Okay, so our, our pick of the Endless packed a lot less good now, but not too worried about it. Uh, here, I still want the Siren on this floor, and we'll be saving the space behind for our Paraffin Thug. Hope to try and make some cash, and just get the lady rolling at the top. Um, I don't think... Oh, you have Spell Weakness. Actually, I can Lance you and get to our Collector. Fantastic news. And might as well apply some extra Spell Weakness there. No reason not to. Alright, we drew our thug. Cool. We'll go ahead and deploy him. That should get us money right away. Uh, toss this out here in the front. Nothing to mold. Um, so I would normally be pro casting these lances, but I want the gold. I guess this will go away, so I might as well pass that. Fortunately, our Baron taking quite a bit of damage, and we're getting pretty unlucky getting the encasement. Or, in fact, our Spike Driver colonies. Uh, there's not that many waves left for those to die either. But here, uh, we'll be looking to go ahead and explosive back and now unfortunately this isn't healthy enough for the back unit to kill so we might as well just fire off more stuff for more can triggers okay well we found our colonies here Uh, 
We do want this one to die 100%. Uh, I'm debating if I also want this one to die in order to get the full upgrade. I think I'm going to be extra greedy and not do that. So we'll play it like so. Just not worry about the other one. Really the ideal case would be for this stuff to die uh, without quite killing the boss so that we can get a chance to get this back on a molded and then uh, have it die again. But I don't think there's much we could have done in the meantime. Throw this out. What's this going to bring back? Tomb and explosive. Sure. Oh. Can I toss one of those out? I guess I can't. That's okay. And unfortunately we're killing the boss here, so... Can't do anything about that. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have played the Molten Encasement. I don't think it would have made a difference, though. So. Alright, so we'll have to wait one more fight for the colony and just throw our cards. Not great order for that. Consuming Frostbite, generally a good card, gifts the guard. Not that exciting. Not that bad, but not that exciting. Uh, just again, not enough spells that where the spell bar matters. And Ice Storm, we don't have any synergies with that as far as like spell power. So we'd have to be looking to upgrade it, and I'm already looking to upgrade too many of our other spells, I think, so we'll go ahead and skip. Reform. Don't need that. I don't believe we're not having that many units die. Uh, this isn't really what we're looking for either, so. Skip from me. Uh, Alright, and I guess this is our chance to go and improve some of our spells. The Trinket Merchant could be good. We're getting some extra money so we could potentially afford something, but. At less than 300, there's still some stuff you can't buy, so I'd rather go this way and just improve our spells and get a free remove as well. We uh, need to get rid of the train stewards pretty quickly here. Is double stack any good? Not too excited about that. Always happy to see the consume on uh, our lances and the cost reduction can go ahead and go on this, that's fine. Just toss a consume on one of these, and let's see, where am I going next? I want to spend this money. Uh, let's see, we got magic, boons, and board, versus pyromains, helmet, concealed caverns. Is there anything super exciting? Duplicate right now. No. Not too excited to duplicate anything, so we'll probably just end up heading into the other merchant and the other trinket. Um, Let's go. So I guess I can just save the cash. I'll do one more purge <laughs> on another train steward, save the rest of our cash for the next slot, rather than spending it on a reroll here. And off we go to our next battle. Spikes of Boar for a random artifact. Well, as usual with Tethys, uh, spikes means your champion is useless. So we have to consider whether we can do this fight without our champion. And my guess is no. So I'm going to skip out on this trial. We also have the stealth. Uh, boss here, which makes me want to maybe uh, set up the bottom floor with like Lady of the House and stuff, just something to absorb a few hits while the stealth ticks away. But it might depend on where our reduced space is and so on. 
Okay, so if we wanted to save the bottom for uh, the lady of the house and like some stewards or whatever, just something to get in the way, then our middle floor would be our Wickless Baron plus our champion. Uh, and then the top floor is the Encant plus uh, uh, the Thug, I guess, something along those lines. I think I will go ahead and do that. It just makes our time with the boss a little bit easier. The lady will steal a few kills here away from the Wakeless Baron, but I think that's well worth it. So we'll try something like this. Okay, some sweet Florence exciting. And we got our encasement. That's also very exciting go ahead and play that for sure. Play the lady down here. Uh, and really we're looking for her to die once and then reform her for the boss phase, I think is the idea. Uh, didn't draw a tank there yet, that's okay. And then we do want one of these guys to die, so I uh, just have to decide where the best place to try and accomplish that is, and I suppose it's just the bottom floor. So, sure. Please, please get killed for me. Uh, the second good one we'll probably just toss in here for a little bit of additional DPS. Uh, Alright. And I don't think anything else really matters here. No reason to lance anything. Yeah. Okay, and we get our other good spike driver colony, so as I mentioned, we'll be putting that up here just as additional damage. The siren goes on top, of course, to tank. And not a whole lot going on. So, uh, just the uh, lands for encant triggers. As before, we're gonna get to see the power of stealth, though. This time we aren't double stacking it, uh, so it's not quite as strong, but it's just something pretty good. Uh, continue playing you. You're dying really don't want to play them and get that copied. No room up here, so... Um, I suppose there's no harm in throwing this out here. Sure. And I'm gonna save this for... Well, I guess I might not get a chance. I would really like to freeze an actual molded rather than the primitive mold, because we're like, we would like to get our Lady of the House back, so I'm not gonna worry about freezing this. Oh, she maybe played the tornado out there. Oh, it looks like the lady is in fact dying this turn. Let's redo this. I guess we can just give it endless. Uh, makes it absorb a few hits, and then we can mold something next turn, potentially. That seems okay. Yeah, we're getting multiple molds. Alright, so here's what we'll do. We'll give you endless. Um, we'll preserve a mold. Then fire off the lands for no real reason. So what we get to do now is, uh, of course, replay the lady here, and uh, get to remold some of our other units as well. I think we actually even fit this guy here, so that's perfect. Um, so let's go ahead and mold and mold. 
And this means we'll get an extra improved copy of the Spike Driver Colony, which I think I'm okay with. Uh, just look. Okay, so we have one here. One that, yeah, I'm pretty sure this means we end up with four of these, and that's fine. We can just remove the crappy one later if we need to. Um, so yeah, we'll be stealth, but I guess they're all burning out anyway. So really, we actually want to do this in a different order. Uh, but anyway, this should take off a few stacks of stealth, is what ultimately matters. Play this once again and kill the boss. Fantastic. Kind of nice tornado on your way out. Didn't quite out ninja the ninja this time, but uh, pretty happy with that result. We've been skipping a lot of challenges, unfortunately, but uh, Tethys is just a delicate hero, though a useful one. Okay, so preserve looking quite good with our Titan's Claw. We can make more stuff free. Not opposed to that. Titan's Tooth. Uh, I don't believe we have any discard synergies, so we'd be looking to get it frozen in order to reduce the cost. And Ice Storm, same as before. Uh, and we are heading to a Merchant of Magic, so there could be something here. We don't. We could use another good spell, I guess. Um, whereas the freeze isn't that important, really. So I'll actually pick this up, look to improve it, seems okay. And definitely not looking for any of that. Right, here's our upgrade for 20 attack. Makes these guys 31 times 2 with a 26 health. Quite the prodigious unit. And of course this guy looking a little awkward, but we can dump him later. If we don't have room for him. So yeah, continuing down this left path, see what our trinket is here. Um, obviously not too interested in better train stewards, so then we're looking at the volatile gauge, giving us a ton of extra draw and randomizing our costs. And given that we have a lot of these zero cost creatures now, not super inclined to do that. The extra draw would be nice, but uh, we're also looking to like play an endless creature every turn. That could make it really awkward. So unfortunately, this is a full skip for me. Pretty rare to uh, skip a relic, but just two pretty pretty unexciting ones there for us. Uh, we are going to be looking to go to this Merchant of Steel, and this is the boss, which means we get reduced money. Uh, there's no trial or anything. So I'm not looking to spend quite all of my cash here, but nevertheless, if there's something cool, uh, I will be doing it, such as making Ice Storm deal 55 instead of 5 damage. I'm considering that pretty good. Uh, then... don't know about the cost reduction. Doesn't... This makes itself free. And these costing 1 and saving slots for some other stuff I think is better. Could do it on like a molded, but even that's not very exciting. I think I'll just take a reroll here so we can get something cool. Okay, permafrost is interesting just because it makes stuff free, though we don't have any expensive spells, so. Eh, eh. We could put it on like a remnant pack, but we don't even care about that card anymore. I think this is just 10 more uh, damage on the ice storm. And of the day. Save lots of cash. Alright, we're adding Scourge cards. We'll probably be taking some damage as we only have our base energy at the moment and we do need to uh, get set up. But it's okay, we have the smaller bottom floor and at this point every slot matters because these colonies want to fit somewhere. So, as such, um, the bottom floor is just going to be some Lady of the House shenanigans that won't do a whole lot. And we'll get Tethys and the gang set up on this floor with the Siren on this floor. Uh, give you some spell weakness, I guess. And 
Uh, yeah, purge this over casting some frozen chances. Okay, silencing these guys, great. Because we're not getting as much nonsense in our deck. Uh, and here. Obviously we play the Baron, the only question is whether we try to like stick a lady of the house in the front, but uh, enough stuff is going to die that he'll be in okay shape. So we'll just get her going on the bottom. Once again, get rid of this, and you know, can't rolling. Get some Frostbite and some Skull Eagles on the boss, cool stuff. Starting to draw lots of cool things here. Um, so we'll get stealth going and a spike driver colony. And then we're looking to deploy the rest of the spike drivers up here, uh, the rest of the good ones. And again, unfortunately, no room for the crappier one here. Um, I suppose it may be better than the paraffin thug at this point. It's a 21 times 2 1 over just a 2010, but I do like the idea of maybe getting cash. Um, but I could see removing the Paraffin Thug. It also gets in the way of our draws. Um, sorry, I'm kind of taking a break from the fight to talk about some potential uh, strategies in the future here, but um, if we take out the Thug, this only takes up one spot, so we could have the Lady with that behind and that leaves the room for like an Entombed Explosive if we can bring the back, that sort of thing. So that might be better. Um, but for this fight specifically, I think we'll be in good enough shape that I can just throw down the thug and make some extra cash. Uh, unfortunately, that means I don't get to play the penance here, but such is uh, our lot in life, I suppose. This one and drew pretty badly there. I guess we'll go ahead and finish the statue off. Um, won't freeze that. Might freeze a targeted one. Should maybe consider reversing um, the order of these two back units. I usually like to have the one with more health in front for when the boss starts eating through everything, but uh, having the sweep go off first before the multi-strike means we can... Uh, if there's a weaker unit in the front, we won't waste the multi-strike attacks on that, so could be important. Uh, Alright, these are, these are not a good time right now. You're about to die drawing probably some sort of molded card, so I'm not too worried about yet that. Um, I will probably just get rid of the worst penance here. Seems fine. I'm like, sure, let's throw this in the boss while it's up here, why not? Uh, am I interested in making something endless? Not especially. And I'm just not drawing these guys, am I? It's rough. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're still good here. Alright, we need to get our primitive molds, so I'll go ahead and fire one of those off. Play our lady. Keep replaying stealth and finally get these guys online. Much improved Ice Storm. Somewhat unnecessary at this point. Spike driver, great. Get rid of one of these, and 
don't need molded at this point, so I'll actually preserve this powerful land, so why not? Floor, and it is. Oh, there we are. Stealth uh, coming in handy yet again. Made a hundred bucks, and let's see what we've got. We can trigger an extinguish. Certainly, don't need another remnant pact, and we don't have room for the bounty stalker. Plus, it's late enough in the run that he probably wouldn't be great. So, the only question is, are we interested in being able to fire off the stealth or the ex other extinguish ability? And I don't think that's powerful enough to be worth a card, so I'll have to skip. And we'll definitely be taking energy at this point, uh, I think we're drawing enough cards. And again, looking to go to the Merchant of Steel to finish upgrading... Um, our Siren of the Sea, and our uh, Lady of the House, I guess. The Parent and Thug, probably getting out of here at this point. So we will look to improve the Spike Driver colony in some way. Should be our last visit to one of these, but uh, I think still a useful one. Might as well check our Champion out first, and we'll of course go with the more Frostbite. Just seems better to me. What do we got? Quick Attack and Health. Who is interested in Quick? Maybe the Spike Driver is interested in Quick? Um, it's certainly not a bad thing. Health, obviously going on the Siren, we need to be a bit tougher, it's one of our main tanks. And we have Attack and Quick. I actually don't mind getting attack on the lady here. Um, again, we don't mind if she dies, we just reform her, so uh, having her just do that little bit of extra damage is helpful. Pretty solid unit, almost a demon fiend at that point. And quick. And I'd really rather give this health than quick, and obviously it's not good on these. Uh, Two units, so let's reroll and see if we can some, find some cooler. We got multi strike, certainly not bad, uh, but I'm actually just gonna give it a battle stone. We're gonna have enough DPS, and that just means it survives some stuff that it wouldn't otherwise. And don't care about these, so we end up with a little bit more money than we needed, really, but that's okay. And at this point, train steward, obviously terrible, and I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look to remove the Paraffin Thug and just set up with a lot of single uh, slot units here. Alright, don't want to spend something on further removals. What would I remove? The Frozen Lances are quite bad. The Energy Siphon is quite bad. I uh, don't need this many Primitive Molds. So we got lots of good removes. Uh, the next one is the final boss. We'll probably go this way, I guess, just because we don't need this Merchant of Steel. Maybe I should have reversed these, actually. Uh, I didn't realize we needed as few upgrades as we did. But what's done is done, so we'll probably end up going this way for the Magic Merchant and the Trinket Merchant. Um, and as such, I might just save a lot of money for the Trinket Merchant. I think we're doing well enough. Uh, I'm somewhat comfortable with a lot of these trials, though obviously there are some that are pretty terrifying. So we'll have to see what we get. Alright, so let us see what is in our future here. Enemies on each floor. Uh, that's probably one of the easier ones. Um, not that we're actually good at dealing with it, though the Ice Storm certainly goes a long way. But uh, our Pyre is just very healthy, so we can afford to leak those initial waves and still be in okay shape. They'll deal 
Uh, we'll deal a substantial amount of damage, but not enough to kill us. I think we can deal with everything else well enough that it's safe to do. Famous last words, though, right? And silencing these guys will, of course, uh, help out as well. Now, the awkward part is uh, trying to set up the initial... Um, sorry, the initial uh, steps here as we get a bunch of units that just kind of die. What I might do is set up my top floor with the Siren and these two Spike Driver colonies um, and just freeze Tethys for setting them up in a future turn. That seems okay. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. I think that seems alright to me. Just take 15 damage here, not the end of the world. These guys... Tethys. And Remnant Pact is gotten maybe bad enough that I just fire it off as a just in case sort of thing here. It'll give us an extra trigger, and if she does die in the end, we don't have to worry about it. Actually killing everything there that's good uh, that we are dying which is less good but that's why we went ahead and gave her the buff that we did <clears throat> in the meantime uh, no no stealth guy quite yet but uh, we did get our Baron and we have our Tethys so with the entombed explosive in the front taking one hit we should be okay so let's get that set up The lands might as well get played here. I'm not sure if it saves us, but uh, have to do it. All right, looks like it does. Great. And the lady, of course, going here. And then we just have to decide if we want this uh, spike driver colony down here, up here. And this is the slightly worse one. <coughs> I'll go ahead and play it in the. surviving here on the bottom, but uh, we did get our endless, though I'm actually not sure if that's enough with these guys dealing the damage they're dealing. Um, there's not a lot I can do about it. Let's just look at the math. Okay, we're surviving. Great. Might fire off a lance. That will... No, that won't actually save us anything. Never mind. Okay, love to see an ice storm on this floor. Go ahead and help us eliminate this enemy and help us survive as well and this can go on either of these two floors uh, I'll just get on the bottom get the stealth stacking and I think as discussed I'll actually put it behind the Tethys alright uh, and we do have some stuff available to mold which I will go ahead and do as well get more triggers and I can out over here. Just fire Lance up for the hell of it. Alright, so our pyre ended up taking about 25 damage or so. But now we're in pretty good shape. I don't expect us to lose from here, though our Wickless Baron is uh, not in the best shape of his life, let's say. Still waiting on one more of these colonies. Slightly awkward. Uh, sure, I'll get rid of that one. Cards. Alright. We finally 
get our last colony. Go ahead and play that. Um, and perform our two units. Our Lady of the House coming back stronger than ever, of course. And just fire some stuff off. Alright. Our top floor um, and our bottom floor actually both <clears throat> missing a bit of health, but looks like the stealth will get us through it anyway. So, uh, great. And the uh, boss lacking revenge, of course, makes it far less scary than usual. Okay, so we took 25 damage, and I'm happy to spend that on 400 gold, I think. Could mean some good trinkets for us, uh, means we can spend pretty freely at the store as well. Okay, and um, we once again have a Titan's Tooth. Uh, the Cuddle Hex, clearly no room for that one. Uh, and Spike of the Stygian's pretty good. I like this card in general. Sap can be powerful. But I think I'll actually take the Titan's Tooth. I have um, the Preserve to freeze it. The Preserve hasn't really been doing much, so that's like a fine little synergy. And it's a strong spell. And here, our Intent on Death, once again, not too helpful. Crushing Demise. Um, we don't have uh, any empty floors to utilize that on, and resin removal I haven't found to be particularly helpful. As you can see, I don't have the gold border on it. Um, just haven't found many uses for this card, so go ahead and skip. And head over this way with over a thousand or over nine hundred gold. Excuse me. Should hopefully be able to buy something good. Uh, okay, some pretty good hits here. The Icicle Fracture giving us random cards frozen, obviously great with Titan's Claw, um, and just a decent effect in general. Uh, it means bad cards end up freezing in your hand instead of cycling through your deck, and that can be helpful to, just to kind of improve the quality of your deck over time. Spell Weakness 2 in the top floor is okay. Uh, we have a couple of mean spells that could be useful with. Who knows what actually ends up on the top floor for us. So I don't know if I'm going to spend on this one. And enemies in thing with Frostbite 2. Really good at the start of the run. A little less exciting at this point. Uh, probably go ahead and skip that one. And just take a quick look at the Merchant of Magic at Holdover. And that's always interesting. Don't know what we'd be interested in holding over, but it's pretty cool. We can throw this on lands. All right, so let's start with these. They're going to be the more expensive ones. Uh, I'm certainly picking up Icicle Fracture, and I think I'll skip out on this. Just hope the next roll is good. And it's not great. Resin block. We're. Uh, not really doing that much with it. It would make the Molten Encasement have a lot of attack, but not too worried about that. Seven energy on the first turn of battle. Sometimes helpful, but usually not important. And Pyre getting 40 health will probably end up buying. Uh, just giving us that extra security blanket is cool. But uh, I could take it or leave it, I think. So I'm going to spend on our spells and see what purges we want to do before worrying about that one. Okay, so holdover... There's unfortunately nothing I'm that excited to hold over. I could put it on Ice Tornado, and then every other turn it freezes, and then I play it for free. That's, like, kind of cool, but... Eh? <laughs> Definitely doing this. Um, I guess I'll reduce Titan's Tooth. Sure. Remove, consume, nope. Uh, plus 20 magic power and consume. Yeah, I keep doing that on lances. And another, okay, so really didn't hit very hard. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably end up buying this and buying some removes. Let's see here. Uh, yes, the lances we didn't upgrade are definitely something that can get out pretty easily. <laughs> We'll go ahead and get rid of both of those. 
Uh, so then we get one more remove versus the precious plating. Uh, I'll just go with the plating. I think that's better than a single card remove. Leaving us with this upgrade that I'll put on something because I might as well put it on something. Alright, and off to the final boss who's devouring our spells, so... Yeah, e even though we removed some bad lances, I think we have enough bad spells to get in the way. And really, none of our spells are that critical to our plan here. Um, like, Ice Storm is our best spell, but even if it gets consumed, we're not crying over it too badly. Alright. Um, so, Wickless Baron unfortunately would not survive down here, so it's a minor problem. We could put the Lady of the House there as a temporary tank. Um, what are our alternatives? Don't want the Spike Driver colony in the front, I don't believe. Uh, yeah, that can't survive either, so that would just die. Um, so yeah, it's really... It's either play the lady down here, have her die probably the following turn, and then try to set up with our actual um, tank that we want, which is the Molten Encasement, of course, versus maybe set up on the middle floor, but then that screws up our flow a bit. Like that as much. Um, so I think I'll, I'll yeah I'll utilize the lady uh, for now. We can reform her later. And she'll get the job done. Uh, and in the meantime, certainly play a spike driver colony somewhere, probably on the second floor. Uh, yeah, it looks like even if one of these guys leaks, it'll still survive. Even if we don't add anything else, so happy to do that. Get a little bit damage on the boss. Of course, these get frozen now, that's cool. Alright. Looks like the lady is in fact dying. We're okay with that. Uh, still don't see our tomb here. That part's unfortunate. Uh, not to mention the vengeful shards and all this stuff. Uh, have to deploy the Siren. I don't think that's really negotiable. Uh, we have a Frozen Molded, so we're guaranteed to be able to remake the Lady if we need it. So I'm not going to worry about uh, putting Endless on her or anything like that. What I might do is play the Entombed Explosive and put the Endless on it. It'll make all of her future Moldeds basically without targets, but I'm happy with enough with that. Uh, the alternative would be to try and play a Titan's Tooth, but... Looks like we're already killing these guys pretty handily anyway. So, um, yeah, this seems fine to me, I think. The only concern with giving this Endless is that it gets in the way of our other draws. Uh, we do want to actually make our way through the rest of this deck. So it might be better to just not even worry about this. Or perhaps play it on something like the Wickless Baron, uh, just in case we get unlucky. Obviously, if he has to reset uh, his harvest triggers, that's not great, but... Um, yeah, maybe that's what actually I'm gonna do, just so that I have something to do with all these molds later on. Uh, yeah, so I'll give this Endless as a just-in-case measure. And at that point, we'll also get the shard. Alright, that's minorly annoying. We can't really stop it. Uh, but on the upside, we got our molten encasements. So that's phenomenal. We get to be safe here now and deploy uh, our spike driver colony as well as more Spike Driver colonies. And, yeah, look to reform both our units. No reason to burn this frozen one. Uh, we have enough mana to do what we want to do. So, uh, go ahead and give these two. Oh, and this, this means uh, we actually get to kill that guy, which is great news. Throw that out there. Okay, 
this shard out of here, and... Yeah, I think I may as well apply more frostbite to the boss. Um, well, this isn't burning. Why not? Let's do an extra 50 damage there. That's pretty good. Hopefully these, uh, this little chip damage won't end up mattering if everything goes well, but you never know. Alright, we end up drawing uh, lots of our good spells. Let's try to make sure we don't consume any of those. So, uh, this lance already has consume on, on it anyway. We also have primitive mold we can burn through. Uh, several choices here. Uh, I think we have, well, I guess uh, I'm casting all of these anyway, so I'll start with the one that actually consumes. Though it's unclear if I actually want these back in our deck or not. And then, yeah, just fire everything at the boss here. Seems alright. Not that much damage at the end of the day, but these encant triggers will help us survive. Freeze this one, something for an expensive spell. Oh, yeah, it auto freezes anyway. So. Alright, two more waves. So, we're not gonna have that much stealth, but we should hopefully have enough. We finally drew our other uh, spike driver. We actually have yeah, one more at the very bottom of the deck. So, we'll put the crappier one up top, I think. Um, just seeing what I want to consume here. I'll consume this primitive mold first. I'll play you in the front. Get this out of here. Like that. damage unfortunately on this tank. Uh, if this bottom floor doesn't do a lot of work, we might be in a little bit of trouble still. Looks like our lady's dying again, but we're happy to just remold her. Alright, here comes the final wave. Obviously replay this. Uh, wow, the boss is dying. That's okay. Don't need that much stealth, it turns out, uh, to, to get these things dead. So, alright, GG. We managed to get get it done with stealth once again, though, uh, yeah, this floor could have could have done some damage as well. Uh, there's quite a lot in these spike drivers. But Tethys, once you can get past his uh, fragility, ends up being quite good. Playing 20 Frostbite ahead is just insane. Yeah, I'm getting like 200 stacks here. Just means you don't even have to survive all that long. And there we go, we did it. Uh, hopefully the game stops offering us some combination of these two clans every single run. 
maybe we've we've appeased the train gods now that we've beaten a run with it. So another successful trip, and uh, just hoping we get something a little different next time. As always, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Oh. See the score screen here.